Hey there, Captain Giddies. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and the following video is going to be a response to my good friend on YouTube, Labyrinth35, who posted a video basically airing his frustrations and disappointment and some of the uh, sort of handling DC Comics and Warner Brothers has had for their character properties, especially when compared to the successes Marvel Studios has had and everything like that. And, uh, you know, it, it's basically amounting to you have Warner Brothers really being stringent on still keeping certain properties unrelated. You know, this has been their longtime problem, going back to a video I made maybe a year or two ago now, where the headline for the video, the, the title was, you know, for DC Comics, for Warner Brothers, is connectivity a must? And uh, we're seeing a lot of success in the Marvel franchise where there is connectivity. And you could kind of point to that loosely and say, well, that's why they have so much success. The thing about that is, though, with Marvel characters, why we seem to have so much, uh, an overabundance of Marvel properties is simply because Marvel Studios doesn't own them all. Um, as irony would have it, you know, we got Sony-funded Spider-Man, we got, uh, you know, Fox-funded X-Men, and Marvel Studios has, you know, the Avengers, Captain America, Thor, all those characters, the Hulk and everything like that. So they can pretty much play a, a game like Dr. Octopus where they have a whole bunch of stuff going at once, and it's not all strictly related to their one hub company, whereas Warner Brothers is really sidled with the fact that they own, they are, they are the primary owner of all of these DC characters. And it's kind of like, I think the mentality is kind of like you go over to a popular kid's house and he's got all the play arts, Kai, artistic masterpiece figures over in one corner for himself. In the other corner, he's got the little G.I. Joes and he's got the DC Universe Classics figures, a couple of Marvel Legends in there and stuff like that. And that's the toys you get to play with, um, the less popular figures and, and less popular pieces. And in a way, that's kind of what Warner Brothers has to do in their negotiation of utilizing these characters because they're so limited. Limited. You know, they know they have bread and butter winners uh, like Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. Then they have these lesser known, lesser regarded characters to the masses, Aquaman, Green Lantern, stuff like that. Stuff they've already experimented with in Green Lantern's case and such like that. And uh, even, you know, they had an Aquaman pilot that was going to be starring Justin Hartley and everything like that. Um, not related to Smallville, but I think the problem is, the mentality is, you know, we have these bread and butter characters, this is our tried and true force, and we have to keep everything else that's, you know, experimental or maybe lesser known, we have to keep that separate. Keep the TV universe separate from the movie universe. Uh, there are going to be certain DC Comics movies, which is not going to relate to the uh, ongoing and burgeoning DC Cinematic Universe began in Man of Steel and going to continue on in Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, and it's baffling. I must agree with you, Labyrinth 35, on that. Um, and I think it's problematic in the long term because Warner Brothers still has that lack of confidence that, you know, they're showing their reservations in what they believe their characters are capable of or DC Comics' characters are capable of because they have such a pantheon of characters. And, I mean, Iron Man, you know, this was a fluke. When this character came out, nobody knew who this character was. I only vaguely was familiar with him. And uh, the movie was made in just such a kick-ass, vibrant fashion you know, pull people in. It, hook, line, and sinker, people love that character now. And I think the lack of confidence and always having to keep these characters in their own little toy bins and everything like that is the big problem, the big hurdle Warner Brothers needs to get over. And I'm really hoping one day they will. I mean, it's going to be very confusing. I remember a few years ago they were talking about, oh, we're going to have a Justice League movie with one version of Superman. We're going to have a Superman line of films with another. And I mean, really, to, to keep a, a lack of connectivity and to keep all properties singularly, you know, related to themselves and everything, um, you know, luckily with the TV series uh, like Arrow and Flash, we're seeing the lines of division basically being broken down, but they still need to get over the hurdle when it comes to film properties and such like that. If you got to put lesser-known characters like Martian Manhunter, Aquaman, Green Lantern next to a Batman or a Superman, do that. Just have the balls, pardon my French, to do it. I think that's what really Warner Brothers and DC Comics needs to do. So um, I'd love to hear from anyone who uh, is familiar with this topic and also will go check out Labyrinth 35's origin video that I'm responding to herein to uh, basically chime in with your thoughts on DC Comics, Warner Brothers, and how they deal with their characters and how they could be doing it better. And uh, otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it finds you well. I'll catch you all later. Peace.